How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and today's video we are taking a super in-depth look at the bunker on Kickstarter. So a lot of you would have seen this already, I've talked about it a few times on the channel and I've even interviewed the creator behind the bunker here on Makers Muse. But now the project's on Kickstarter, it's been up for a couple of weeks and I've finally got a bit of time to actually look really in-depth into this concept and see whether you should back it or not. So let's get started. Welcome back guys, so as I said this is Bunker on Kickstarter and the idea behind Bunker is it's your 3D printer's perfect companion. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at the video. 3D printing technology has revolutionized how we make things. Sure has. So the whole idea behind the Bunker is it's a smart filament or smart spool holder for your 3D printer. And if you've been in 3D printing for as long as I have, you'll know that, well, yeah, it's great and it's revolutionized the way we work, but things go wrong all the freaking time with 3D printing. I mean, it used to be a three to one failure rate for me when I first started working in a 3D printing studio in terms of three fails to one actual print you could give to the customer. And even then it wouldn't be that great. And most of the time it was a filament feed issue. So I'm talking back in the days of like the MakerBot replicator, that sort of thing where the filament would just sort of stop extruding and you wouldn't know. So fast forward a few years and people are starting to come out with solutions to this problem. One of which I reviewed last year is a filament sensor that is literally a switch with a piezo from endless parts and it works really well. Like the filament runs out and an alarm goes off. You're in a different room, you can hear it and you've got maybe a foot of plastic to run back in and pause the machine to change over. It's a very low tech way of making sure your printer doesn't run out of filament. But the bunker is like the other end of the spectrum to that. This is basically the smartest uh, spool holder I have ever seen. And the idea behind it is to keep track down to the gram how much filament you have left on your 3D printer. And it's doing this by basically you scan in the, the barcode of the filament or enter in the details and there's a whole app ecosystem around it to keep track of your filament. So here you've got two, up to two one kilo spools, so each one holds up to two rolls. You can have two different colors or maybe one for a different, two, two for different printers at the same time. And it keeps track of it, which is cool because if you change filaments, then you can remember how much I had on this specialty roll. And I say specialty because that used to be the main thing that got me. For example, printing in Bronzeville, you want to make sure you have enough to finish the job. And that was always the catch. Like, have I got enough to do this job or will it fail halfway through? And if you know with Bronzeville from Colorfab, it's not exactly the cheapest filament. So if your print runs out halfway through, you lose a lot of money. So a few of you would have noticed, I've actually endorsed it already. They have a video of me talking about it. They basically approached me a couple of weeks before they went live on the campaign and said, hey Angus, what do you think of this idea? And I was like, yeah, actually it's a pretty cool idea. So I'll endorse the concept. But now the campaign's live, I've had time to really think about it and look for detail into the technology they're proposing. Smart filament storage system, Automatic feeding, they've got a little little stepper motor, one of those really cheap geared stepper motors that you can get uh, off eBay. I think uh, the that 101 Hero that I have also pledged for uh, on Kickstarter uses those motors. They're quite small, but they're perfect for this application to feed filament out of a system at a controlled rate. And it's worth noting that this isn't a like a Bowden style extruder setup. It's not feeding it into your printer directly. It's just assisting it to come out. Then your printer takes control of it. Time and material monitoring. So it's monitoring how long a print goes for and how much material you use. So if you're using a bit of print software like Simplify 3D, which will give you a estimate, that's good. But this can also directly monitor how much filament goes into a print because estimates are always a little bit, a little bit off. Moisture and dust free. This is a huge killer of 3D printing nozzles, dust. I personally have suffered a little bit from this, but not huge amount because I tend to keep my rolls in a dust free environment. But schools, oh my God, the amount of schools I've visited that they'll keep their printers in a room where other crafts go on, possibly even sanding and dust in the air will just gravitate to spools because the filaments usually statically charged. And yeah, that will just go straight into your hot end and RIP to your nozzle. So the idea of it having it in a box is pretty cool. And I've got right here, uh, if I can grab it, there you go. This is, I'm testing the Up Mini 2 at the moment, and this is their solution to this problem. So it's a spool holder for their filament. And then crack it open here. That's it. In my review, I'll talk about how annoying it is to open. But, there we go. You see here, it holds their spool, and it goes in there with the rollers. 
And I guess you could put some desiccant in the bottom of it, but the only thing this does is keeps the roll safe from moisture. There's nothing in here to monitor anything, and the thing that really, really annoys me with the up machine still is there's no sensor. There is no, there's no sensor in the up machines to detect when the filament runs out. You can hack them to get a sensor which would normally be on the door, but if that spool holder runs out of plastic, the up won't know at all. <laughs> and yeah, your print will fail. So that's a really nice looking solution to something that hasn't really solved the problem in my opinion. And the final point here is mobile app connectivity. And this is the thing that really actually gets me excited to the next level on this campaign. So if it was just a spool holder that kept a track of my filament, that's nice. But what's really cool and what is something I like is the fact that it's got a Wi-Fi module. This Wi-Fi module essentially, the whole idea behind it is you can you know, connect to your bunker, you're saying you scan your spools, and then it will send you back data. So it'll tell you if your print has finished, so you can go, go to it remotely, instead of trying to keep track of the time. But something that's also pretty cool, and I, I did talk to Bruce a bit about this, is if you have a 12 hour job, and the filament stops extruding, or there's a problem in it, 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 it has very intermittent extrusion, there's no reason the bunker can't detect that, and then give you a notification about it. And going further down the page a little bit, we have this, which is basically they're trying to make the bunker hackable with a GPIO out, which you could then interface with, and the bunker API, which you could then modify, which is pretty cool because if you have the bunker detect filament has run out or jammed, you could possibly with some machines in the market, get the machine to pause by sort of incorporating some sort of trigger. Right, so this happened completely by chance, but I'm sticking in the video anyway. So this is the print of the Up Mini 2 that I just tested, and it has started to fail at the top. And I would not have known that happened unless I noticed a spool next to me, it stopped spinning. It's doing the sort of air printing thing where it just smears a very small wisp of filament around. So I think I am going to pledge for the bunk. <laughs> Even though I'm probably going to get one for free of uh, 3D printing systems, I think I can see it being extremely useful for this kind of application. So as I said, I've, I've pledged for the bunker just because this has been happening to me in the last few weeks and it's really starting to annoy me. So I would really like a system that helps tell me when things have stopped extruding. But let's have a look at the campaign uh, support tiers anyway. So keep in mind that like the Australian dollar is terrible at the moment and the New Zealand dollar is even worse than that. So 199 New Zealand dollars is 193 Australian roughly and about 100 and what did it say? $145 US and that includes the shipping. So yeah, in terms of the cost, that seems to be pretty decent in my opinion. But let's go down a little bit further. They're not doing any sort of stretch goals or anything rubbish like that, which I do appreciate. I think stretch goals are really dangerous to campaigns just in terms of them actually delivering on time. So in terms of uh, actually trusting the bunker to deliver, let's look at the, co the company behind it. So as I said, I interviewed Bruce before from 3D Printing Systems and 3D Printing Systems is behind the bunker. And if you're in Australia and you've ever seen the up printers, you'll know who 3D Printing Systems is. They they're pretty much the largest supplier of 3D printers in Australia, I would, I would say. So I got my Up Mini from them originally years ago, and yeah, this is their website. So in terms of a company not delivering, they would probably not want to be that company because they've got such a reputation already, and to have a sort of scam to their name or something like that would not be something that would be very, vi very wise for them to do. So that gives a lot of... Uh, lot of believability. Let's look at their actual goals in terms of when they're going to be shipping. So they're saying they're going to ship in March 2017, which is quite a while away actually. You know, it's, it's, it's a few months into next year, but that's what they're going to need to do the molding. So if you look at the design of the bunker, if you can find a picture, you've got quite a lot of molding to do and that's why they need the money. Injection molding is not cheap. They've got a symmetric mold design, so the top and bottom would be the same mold, which is clever, saves you cost. But it's, that's where most of the cash is going to go into, in my opinion. I think they're going to have to spend a lot of money getting these molds done. And in terms of the software, that's probably going to be a secondary thing. I think the software is going to be interesting to develop. They've always, already got a proof of concept, but they're going to have to do a lot to make the app work. Um, in terms of, I, I don't know anything about software for, for apps, but uh, Apple and Android could be interesting. In terms of the design, they're actually, they seem to have got it pretty well nailed. 
in terms of for their for their functional prototype. So I don't think much would change in terms of going into the final design, but they're definitely going to have to invest a lot into that molding. I think it's shipping as a kit as well, if I read correctly. So it's going to ship uh, with the because it's like a big empty box. It's going to ship the top inserted into the bottom, and then you just put it together yourself. So it'd be very easy to put together by the looks of it. Kind of looks like the Up Mini with the, with the handle, which is cool. I do like that style of handle. And there I am, guys. So as I said, the Bunker guys approached me a few weeks before their campaign went live and asked what I thought about the concept. And that's what I, that's what I recorded for them. And now I've actually had a chance to finally look into in-depth in their campaign and what the actual product is and what it will actually do. So if you enjoy this video, guys, and want to see more about this campaign, I did interview Bruce from 3D Printing Systems a little while ago as to his idea behind the Bunker. And as I said... Uh, I have pledged for one because I want to see if it will actually improve my success with testing filaments because I'm sick and tired of coming back to, to machines where the printers stopped extruding because the filaments jammed and I, I test new things all the time so I can't really be 100% sure each time it's going to work. So for me, it seems to be worthwhile. But again, to be completely clear, guys, this is another Kickstarter campaign. And although I have large faith in 3D printing systems delivering, there's still a chance that things can go wrong. So with Kickstarter campaigns, it's little more than a donation. There's very little protection to your pledge. And if some accident happens or, you know, cost the balloon out of proportion, there's a chance you might not get your product or your money back. It's always always a chance that that's going to happen and I have to mention it in this video guys. So thanks for watching and uh, if you want to see future 3D printing reviews on Makers Muse and tips and tricks and stuff like this where I look into campaigns and see how viable they are, hit the subscribe button, it helps me out a huge amount. I do enjoy doing these videos and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later guys. Bye. He has placed satellites into orbit. He has actually walked in space.